Hello everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well, so please check the link in the description for more details. My name is Sava, and today we're continuing to investigate technical trading rules and their applications to algorithmic trading in Python. And today we'll try to build our own trading bot using the logic of support and resistance. That is, identifying psychological barriers in the stock price and using it to generate buy and sell signals. So first of all, let's discuss the packages we'll need to implement our trading bot. So as usual, we'll just import NumPy as NP to work with arrays pandas as pd to work with data frames we'll need to import y finance that is the yahoo finance api package to retrieve real-time market data to calibrate our strategy and we'll also need matplotlib pyplot importing it as plt for the visualization of our strategy performance having imported these packages we can download our stock data so let's calibrate our strategy for a well-known pharmaceutical stock Johnson and Johnson the ticker is J and J and we can retrieve our data using the Yahoo Finance download function inputting the ticker we have just specified as a string variable and start an end date so let's start at the very beginning of 2016 2016 January the 1st and add at the most recent trading daily available to date so 2021 April the 16th having specified that we can now code strategy parameters. First of all, let's input the trading fee our strategy is exposed to. So how much do we need to pay to our broker when we open or close our positions? And let's proceed with a quite low but still material trading fee of five basis points. So 500 of a percentage point. So 0 0.0005, five basis points. And now we can specify the thresholds that will convert our support and resistance indicator into buy and sell signals. And the logic is very obvious and easy here. If we have identified that the share price is approaching the relevant psychological barrier from below, and it serves as a resistance line here, we would trigger a sell signal and it will short our stock. So the sell threshold would be some number close to one, so higher than a half, as our support and resistance indicator would fluctuate between zero, which is the relevant support line, and one, which is the relevant resistance line. And here, let's be relatively stringent and say that our sell signal would be triggered only if the indicator exceeds 0.7. And symmetrically, the buy signal would be executed if the indicator falls below 0.3. Here, the mathematics of it is very similar to the relative strength index mathematics that we have investigated in one of our previous tutorials. So check this out if you're interested in relative strength index, that is RSI. But we'll proceed with our support and resistance. And for the buy-in signal, we'll need to assume that the share price is approaching the relevant psychological barrier from the top, and it will likely bounce back from the support and generate some positive returns for us to grasp by longing the stock. So having specified the parameters of the strategy, we can code the signals that will be extracted from support and resistance logic. So first of all, let's calculate the returns of our stock by using the daily closing prices we have retrieved from Yahoo Finance and uh, enforcing the pandas built-in PCT change function, which is percentage changes that will efficiently calculate daily returns using closing prices. Then we can start thinking about the support and resistance logic. So the support and resistance uh, dwells on psychological barriers investors have in terms of the price dynamics. And one of the most common assumptions technical traders use when calculating support and resistance lines is that they form around relevant psychological barriers that are most likely formed around round numbers of the share price. So for example, if the share price is trading between 100 and 1000, then investors would consider 100, 200, 300, 400, and so on and so forth as relevant support and resistance lines. If it's trading in the thousands, then we would have 1000, 2000, 3000, and so on and so forth as relevant support and resistance lines. And it is quite uh, obvious to illustrate this 
from the most recent S&P 500, Price Dynamics. It has been quite widely discussed that 4,000 is a psychologically relevant barrier for the S&P 500 movement, and it was quite hard for the price to uh, break through this resistance. However, now that it has crossed 4,000 quite recently, it is very unlikely that it will drop below 4,000 in the near future. So to implement this logic of psychological barriers in terms of round numbers, we can calculate scaled prices by using base 10 logarithms and some handy NumPy functions. So let's divide the closing price by 10 to the power of NumPy floor, which is just rounding down, implemented efficiently in an array fashion, implemented uh, onto NumPy base 10 logarithm of the closing prices. And this logic would convert our closing price into a value between 1 and 10. So it will bring it down to the most significant digit. And this digit can then be used to retrieve support and resistance indicator. So for example, no matter what is the magnitude of the stock price, here we would have some number between 1 and 10, and the relevant support and resistance thresholds would be then just integers. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on and so forth until 10. And to implement this, we can already calculate the support and resistance indicator by inputting the scaled price and calculating its remainder from the division onto 1. And this is just a built-in Python mod operator that calculates the remainder, which is the percentage sign, and having calculated the remainder from the division of 1, we can then see how close or far we are from relevant support and resistance lines. If this is close to 1, it means that the relevant resistance line is very close, and perhaps uh, there would be some reversals, some bearish action here. And if it's very low, it means that we are very close to the relevant support line, relevant psychological barrier, relevant round number in that case, and a bullish action is very likely. So here we can already use our support and resistance indicator and the thresholds we have specified above to calculate our signals. And the signals would just be comparing the support and resistance indicator to the thresholds and determining whether we need to long the stock, short the stock, or stay in cash, stay neutral. We will be bullish on the stock and will trigger a buying signal, coded as 1 here, if our support and resistance indicator falls below the buy threshold. And uh, in a similar fashion, we'll trigger a selling signal, minus 1, if the support and resistance indicator is above the sell threshold. And we'll stay in cash if our support and resistance indicator is anywhere in between 0.3 and 0.7. And the flexibility of Python would allow us to see how the strategy results change if we meddle with these parameters, to see which strategy configuration is the optimal one. Then we can start calculating the returns of the buy and hold strategy and the support and resistance strategy to have some comparison between whether the support and resistance strategy, whether technical analysis adds value to our hypothetical investor. So first of all, let's calculate our buy and hold returns by using the NumPy array of data returns and get returns from the second day until the very end. Second day is coded here as one because enumeration starts from zero in pretty much all programming languages. And uh, here we have got no returns available for the very first day, as we don't know what the closing price was before the start of 2060, as that's just our data downloading specification. And now we can calculate the spot and resistance strategy return by using the same area of returns. However, now we have to multiply them by the relevant signals. We'll just get the return of the stock if we are long in it, if our signal is equal to 1 we'll get the reverse of it if we are shorting the stock, if our signal is minus one, and we'll just get zero return if our strategy gets a neutral signal. So let's multiply it by the NumPy array of data signal, and here we need to use relevant signals from the past trading day, because we use our current close to justify our signal that we will use to obtain any return or none, in the following trading day. So here 
will refer to signals from the very start until the penultimate day, day minus one, the day second before the last. And then to implement the logic of fees, we can subtract the fee level we're exposed to, so five basis points here, we have specified it above, and we'll multiply it by the absolute difference between our signals in the two neighboring trading days. So we can copy this area of signals over here, and we can subtract that from signals from day one until the very end. And that would quite succinctly account for all potential cases that we'll have when we have to pay fees to our broker. When we change from a cash position into a long or a short position, we have to pay fees once. And uh, similarly, when we close our short or long position and move into a neutral cash position, we also have to pay the fees once. But if we change from a long position to a short position or vice versa, we'll have to pay the fees twice as we close the original position and open the new one. And this absolute difference between signals multiplied by the fees allows you to code all of these possibilities in one formula. Then, to interpret the results of our strategies more easily, we can calculate annualized returns of the two strategies. And here, we can just calculate the product using the numpy prod function, returning one plus the area of returns, and uh, raising it to the power of 252, as about 252 trading days in a year, and divided by the length of the respective return array. And then we'll subtract one, because we want the annualized rate of return and not the rate of capital appreciation. And similarly, we can calculate the annualized return of the support and resistance strategy, inputting the relevant arrays over here. To calculate the risks, we can use the NumPy standard deviation, STD function, again, inputting relevant return arrays over here, and annualizing it using the well-known formula, multiplying by the square root of 252. And the square root is just raising something to the power of a half, isn't it? And similarly, again, calculate the risk for the support and resistance strategy. And now, having calculated everything we're interested in, we can build some simple interface to visualize the results. So first of all, we can print the characteristics of our buy and hold strategy, return and risk, and then add up onto this string variable, the string variables that we would have obtained from our calculations. So string of a rounded, we round not to overcrowd our interface with excessive decimal places. So the buy and hold return times 100, rounded to two nearest decimal places, plus a percentage sign, because we want to report it in percent, that's more understandable. And we also do the same thing with the risk. So we round the buy and hold risk times 100 in percentages to the two nearest decimal places and add the percentage sign as well. And also, in a similar fashion, we'll also report our support and resistance strategy return and risk, like that. Just changing the relevant variable names over here. And finally, to visualize the comparative performance of our support resistance strategy and the buy and hold strategy, we can use the PLT plot function. And to build equity curves, as usual, just resort to cumulative product comprod functions from the NumPy package and use one plus respective arrays and to start at one so to simulate equal investments into the two strategies we can just use numpy append and append one at the start to our array of cumulative returns and do exactly the same for the support and resistance strategy returns as well and finally we can just enforce our code and see how the two strategies compare so first of all we can see that our support and resistance strategy in orange does outperform our buy and hold strategy by quite a bit. It has predominantly higher annualized returns, and it's also exposed to lower levels of risk. And this is attributable to the fact that we sit in cash quite often, meaning that we're not exposed to market risk for some notable uh, shares of our time. And uh, we also time the market quite well. However, we can see that the support and resistance strategy does mimic the market in the first half of the sample 
and then it takes off quite substantially. And the VR performance is predominantly achieved in the period of market turbulence and high volatility that was experienced in around March, April 2020, when the crisis uh, revolving around the pandemic has just started. And it uh, does tell a lot about uh, profitability of technical trading strategies, and uh, it shows you that technical analysis is most profitable when the market is inefficient, predictable, and succumbs to irrational panic. That's exactly the same finding that we have documented when looking at moving average convergence diversions and relative strength index strategies. However, the flexibility of our code also allows us to see whether strategies would be better or worse subject to different levels of buy and sell thresholds. For example, if we make our strategy more active, if now we are trading uh, in a great, greater proportion of the time, we don't wait uh, that much until we're selling or buying, then the performance of our strategy does not change much in terms of our return. It decreases quite a bit. However, our risk is also increasing. And we can see here that we're mimicking the market um, to a larger extent in the first half of our sample. We can also see how robust our outperformance is. Would we be still outperforming the market if our trading fee was not 5 basis points, but 20 basis points? And quite uh, fast, we can already see that it's indeed the case. However, our strategy is quite uh, sensitive to trading fees. If you increase trading fees to 20 basis points, the uh, performance does uh, decrease quite a bit. And that's all there is for a trading bot using support and resistance logic in Python. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any suggestions for future videos in business, finance, or economics topics you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel or consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.